So my grandfather used to tell me oftentimes, right, show me where they put their money and that will show you where their values are. And and I'm telling you, people are spending millions, of, if not billions of dollars in marketing, communications and public relations. And that's where the future is. My backstory, wow, is one of twists, turns, ups, downs, and, and uh, challenges and successes. Uh, I am uh, Greg Hedgepath, as you mentioned. I currently serve as the Director of Marketing and Communications for North Carolina State University's graduate school programs in the graduate school. Um, I've been in higher education, marketing, communications, public relations for the past 15 and a half years. Uh, kind of cut my teeth, if you will, uh, within the UNC, uh, North Carolina system, uh, higher education. Um, I've toured, uh, if you will, across the country uh, and, and had uh, served at, uh, as chief comms officer for student affairs and enrollment management at Florida Atlantic University in South Florida. So a part of the Florida South Florida system for a while and uh, found my way back here to Raleigh. Um, and so the, the the field, as I mentioned, the ups, turns, downs, and inroads, uh, I, I think I've done all things creative. I've, I've been a photographer, a videographer, a web developer, a senior web developer. Uh, I've been a journalist, I've served in news services and public relations. I've done crisis communications uh, from a local government perspective. Uh, I've done some public private partnerships things and, and currently own my own PR marketing and communications firm as well. And so um, I, I'm a certified digital marketing uh, professional uh, and I, I've, I've enjoyed uh, this field, right? I'm forever learning and growing. I call myself a competitive learner um, because there's nothing out there that if someone else knows that I need to know it too. Uh, and so to, to answer the question, I've been doing this uh, marketing comms and public relations thing for quite a while um, and have enjoyed it. Um, again, uh, cutting my teeth uh, in that higher education space uh, and have enjoyed that time uh, and still enjoying that time. And when we think about just, you know, data and public relations and, and communications, uh, it's all around us, right? Like we're using data to justify, you know, ad spin. We're using data to, uh, if you will, uh, create proposals to influence, uh, to get resources. Uh, and so I would say my first kind of, uh, you know, dipping my toe in the water of data was to uh, create a proposal to start a marketing and communications team for the Division of Student Affairs uh, at a um, at a public university. Uh, oh, I won't name that university, but uh, that team is still very much in existence. Uh, and I'd like to say it's because of the foundational work that we did to develop it and build it, right? And, and a lot of that stemmed around data. Um, you know, the, the need, if you will, uh, for such an organization or unit to exist within uh, a division, um, and also, uh, you know, just overall impact, right? And so we had to use that data that we were gathering, if you will, or the metrics that we were using to justify even after we developed this unit, that that unit was sustainable and needed to continue to exist. Um, and so when I think about the use of data in that way, right, from a more internal perspective, uh, we, um, uh, uh, that, that was my first introduction, right? And, you know, justifying using numbers and data to justify the need uh, for the creation of a unit, right? To the, the allocation of resources uh, for salaries and equipment and things of that nature. And then of course, uh, then creating uh, additional data points, right? And data sets that we could use to communicate to the vice chancellor and chancellor that, hey, this is working. Um, and so when I think about public relations, marketing and communications, you know, oftentimes we're thinking about data from a, you know, consumer perspective, right? Um, and, and not necessarily oftentimes looking at it from a like, what are we doing? How are we impacting uh, uh, the field um, and collecting data points that help us do that? And so we were able to, you know, understand the priorities of the university uh, and then create, you know, data points uh, that helps support that. 
um, and, and, and our work. And so that was my first real introduction uh, into data, if you will, right? I was I was going out there and, and for lack of better words, I was begging for some money. <laughs> and so I had to use data, man, to, to, to make it happen, uh, both from a quantitative and qualitative perspective, right? So. I'll, I'll go to my South Florida days, right? Sunny South Florida, where I, I served uh, at Florida Atlantic University um, as the Director of Marketing, Communications and Technology uh, for the Division of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. And one of the tasks that we were given uh, while I was there was kind of, um, for, for lack of better words, right? Like this wasn't the exact term used, but you know, prove the impact of the Division of Student Affairs. Right. Like what are, what is it that the division is doing to to improve student life, student engagement, to help with student retention uh, here on campus? Um, and I was excited by that because, you know, again, going back to the, the premise of this whole conversation, right, being a data champion, we understood that our president responded to numbers. Right. You know, uh, as most presidents of major, you know, uh, corporations do. Right. Like, show me the numbers, show me the impact. Right. Um, and so we work very closely in collaboration with our assessment unit, our Department of Assessment, to do the first ever digital assessment showcase. And so we took uh, the data that was being collected by 32 different departments, offices, and colleges at Florida Atlantic University and created a digital data showcase. And what I mean by that is that we not only created the infographics, animations, things of that nature uh, to kind of uniquely storytell for these departments and offices. We also went out and got the equipment that was necessary to do it. And so I'll never forget, we were like, all right, we need to get our whole, uh, our, it was our student center. We need to book out all of our rooms in our student center, right? Take out the petitions and we're gonna bring in, uh, I think it was 50, 75 inch televisions. And we're gonna set those up strategically throughout the room and we're gonna create a map where you can start at a particular point or you can, you know, free for all it. Uh, and it reminded me of those old poster uh, research symposiums, right? Where, you know, you go out, you do research, you have your poster and you're telling about it, but we did that digitally. Um, and it was a lot of data. Man. It, I mean, we had units submit, you know, new data points to us, whether it was, you know, campus rec and wellness talking about health and well-being of students on campus and the use of, of certain facilities and, and programs to our counseling service, talking about the need uh, to, to improve and enhance further our, you know, mental health and counseling capabilities. Um, and it was a hit, man. I mean, we, we combed through so much data on, on that day or, or excuse me, uh, during that time period. Uh, and we had about six month window to pull this all together. Um, and, and our president uh, and our vice uh, president at the time, both were just super excited about what, you know, my team uh, and uh, the assessment unit were able to create, right? We took data, made it less boring uh, for one, right? Through, I said, like I said, the use of infographics and, you know, shout out to my graphic designers at the time that were able to take just numbers from spreadsheets and really create uh, visual stories uh, that kind of really helped support the need uh, to not only further invest in certain units within the Division of Student Affairs, but also to kind of, if you will, help champion the work that so many of those, you know, staff members have been doing uh, to carry uh, students throughout their academic journey. Um, and so that's a highlight for me. It still is, very much is. Um, oftentimes when I get an opportunity to talk about, you know, the use of data and how it's implemented in marketing and communications well, I always go back to that example because again, right, you know, we're so used to seeing infographics, we're so used to seeing, um, you know, um, report annual reports and whatnot. But we actually took that and created a UX, like a user experience, 
lights, right? Like when you walk through those doors and saw all of those televisions with monitors and data points and, you know, animations and things like that, data visualization, uh, you, you kind of, it took you a step further into wanting to know more about how these different units operate. And, and again, you know, not to belabor the, the conversation, but that was, that was, that was awesome. Like it, it really was a, a unique way to showcase um, the work and impact of the Division of Student Affairs and even enrollment management, because we were able to take, you know, uh, data from our students that were currently enrolled, that were enrolling and segment that in a way that showcased to our president here are here's who our students are here's where our students are coming from and here's where uh and how they're matriculating through our institution you know and and that was gold that that, that was gold for them what you're referring to uh is um you know so outside of the hat i wear in this higher education marketing communications professional experience is i am also um a i own i'm a president and ceo i think i mentioned this of my own uh communications marketing and public relations firm and i do uh work mostly uh with small businesses uh minority owned uh, small businesses uh especially those in rural eastern parts of north carolina and I've had the opportunity with a particular client of mine uh, to really begin to champion because it's an issue that's close to my heart. Uh, this idea of, you know, um, if you will, eradicating uh, chronic disease uh, in, in, in rural black communities uh, across North Carolina. Um, and that starts with, you know, what we're putting in our bodies. Um, and so we had the opportunity to attend the White House Conference on Hunger, Nutrition and Health, uh, which is the historic conference in and of itself because it had only happened once 50 years ago. Um, and so to be there during that time frame and to talk about and champion uh, some of the programs and initiatives that were taking place in our state with this particular organization that I'm a part of was just, you know, it was it was awesome. Uh, so, you know, that's first and foremost. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, it, it, I would say data helped us get there, right? Uh, and data has helped us in the way of being able to justify a need in that particular market. Uh, oftentimes rural eastern parts of my state uh, of North Carolina go kind of un, unnoticed um, in particular communities, especially. Um, and so one of the things that I did when I first joined th that organization as its uh, marketing communications director, marketing communications consultant, was to look at the numbers, right? You know, one, first and foremost, right, the obvious things that we as part professionals know, like who, who knows about your brand, right? What does your brand awareness look like? Um, and oftentimes, you know, when we think about both qualitative and quantitative, right, surveys, feedback, both solicited and unsolicited, like what is it saying to us um and, and those folks that aren't very heavily tied to or don't have a lens toward uh data as it relates to marketing and communications they sometimes those things go un, un, unspoken they go missed right um and and so coming into that organization we began to look at that we began to say what data do we have not only as it relates to uh, our organization, but just overall, what data exists as it relates to the need for this in this market, for lack of better words. And we use that information that we had collected, that others had collected. We did additional research uh, to find that there were some real gaps uh, that needed to be filled as it related to access to healthy foods, as it related to uh, the lack of knowledge or a knowledge gap, if you will, um, even from a social economic status, right? You know, who is or who has access to certain things? Where are food deserts in our spaces? And all of that, right? Some would look at that and say, well, that's not really related to marketing and communications, but I dare argue that it is because that very data helped us create the narratives and created the tone that we needed to have as related to the urgency of now, right? As it relates 
uh, to, to, to food and, and food insecurity. And so, you know, when, when we think about this notion of how we use data in public relations, marketing, communications, it's, it's the, not only the, you know, who's, who's, uh, who's, who do we have on social, you know, who's liking and following and sharing. It's not only, you know, our Google analytics, who's touching our websites. I dare say that it's the data that's, that's involving the subject matter, right? in how we're using that data to kind of creative, uh, creatively story tale um, and, and also inform, right? Because quite often times we're so close to a particular thing that we don't have an opportunity to step back and see it from that 100,000 foot view and go, wow, there's a real need, there's a real issue, there's a real challenge here. Um, and, and so we came into that organization to do that. Uh, and hence, that organization began to be seen as the go-to when it came to certain things in rural eastern parts of North Carolina um, as it related to chronic illnesses and as it relates to, you know, healthy foods, equitable food systems uh, in, in Black communities. Um, and so I was proud of that, still very proud of that because there's still work to be done and to be able to get a special invitation to the White House to kind of uh, talk about those things was very unique in and of itself and showcased, you know, that that folks are out there, they're listening, they're they're watching, they're, they're understanding. Uh, and all of that happens because we communicated it, right? I'm a, I'm a professor, I'm an adjunct professor, and I often tell my students, I say, tell me what's the next big thing coming out of Silicon Valley. And immediately they're either going to their phones to Google something or they're like, I don't know, or they're thinking about what they last heard. And each form of that, as I tell them, you may not know because it has yet to be communicated. And so understanding the power of communications and how we use it and interact on a daily basis, like that's important. And you know, it starts with engagement, I think, right? And, and the definition of that engagement for us is who's seeing our messaging, who's interacting with our messaging, you know, and, and how's our messaging landing in those spaces. Um, the other part of that for us uh, is a metrics that we go, how many, how many folks are we getting into the funnel, right? You know, I knew that there's no way we create uh, or talk marketing, communications, public relations, and we don't say something about the marketing funnel, right? And so every day, how are we bringing people into that funnel? Um, and so that's a metric that I want to, you know, how many leads are we capturing, um, especially now here in my position with the graduate school, as we think about how we're talking about graduate education at North Carolina State University, and how are we getting people, uh, if you will, to that place or point where they're applying uh, to, to, to join this amazing institution. Um, and so, you know, I find myself shifting uh, and thinking about some of those very quantitative numbers, uh, you know, the, the who, what, when, where, right, when we think about segmentation. Um, and, and so for me personally, um, right now, that focus, if I'm running this marketing communications, this directorship hat at NC State, I am very much thinking about, you know, who's engaging with our content? You know, uh, what is, you know, the, the frequency uh, of our content um, and, and how uh, are we beginning to improve uh, upon that ability to, to capture and bring people into that funnel. Um, so, so if I had to narrow it down, it would certainly be uh, those things. First and foremost, as I mentioned earlier, right, the, that, that, I, that example that I give my students uh, in my mass comms communications courses, which is tell me the next big anything. And if it has not yet been communicated, then you don't know it, right? And in this world right now, as you mentioned, troubling times of misinformation and so forth and so on, having trusted resources as it relates to marketing and communications, you know, when I think I now put on another hat of, you know, again, going back to my public relations, marketing and communications firm, when we go into rural communities across North Carolina or black and brown communities across North Carolina, we're coming in as a trusted resource for information. 
right? Let's like that trusted part is so important. Um, we're also coming in at a point where we're meeting those uh, consumers, for lack of better words, where they are um, and showing up in their spaces. Um, and so the role that marketing, communications, public relations will play for any organization is going to be so vital, right? When we think about the just sheer dollar amount that is being invested right now in social media spend, in uh, 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 digital advertising and marketing, you know, my, my, my grandfather told me a long time ago, uh, show me where they put their money and that'll tell you where their values and what's important to them. Um, and dollars right now are being spent in those markets uh, to communicate right to market to consumer uh and so the the role that public relations marketing communications will play is the vital one in any organization because i dare say there's nothing that you can invent there's no research that you will go out and do um uh, there's no service that you will provide that will be seen heard otherwise utilized if it has not yet been communicated to the masses um, and so that's the role that we play, right, is finding a way to either condense that thing into snackable pieces and bites that people can understand or going out and identifying the market that that product service research needs to be communicated to. Um, and so so we, we play a huge role in ensuring that that happens and that the life, if you will, of these organizations continues to happen as well. You know, and for me, it would be because I'm a huge component of why, right? You know, being able to communicate your why, uh, the why you're in this market, you're in this field, as well as being able to understand uh, the why of those organizations that you're going to play a huge role in communicating the why of. If that makes sense, right? That's kind of confusing. But at the end of the day, why is such a powerful question? Um, I've got a 10 year old daughter and a, and a four year old daughter that oftentimes ask that, right? Why dad? Why dad? Why dad? And if you don't under, if you don't understand the why, then it becomes harder and harder to articulate it, right? Um, and so for, for me, uh, even when I first started as a, as a marketing communications professional, like I already had kind of that light introduction into understanding why right um you know have a reason have a purpose for doing whatever it is that you're doing um and and that is stuck with me that has been my mantra if you will throughout my time in marketing and communication because so often we operate on the form of the how and the what right you know you think about the flyer it's the who what when and where um but but we don't spend as much time communicating the why in, in today's, you know, um, I think saturated market, if you will, of, 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 of folks buying, selling, uh, producing, developing, right, innovating, um, you know, the why is going to be what connects people, right, and, and how uh, relationships, meaningful relationships are formed. Uh, and from that, right, you create some form of loyalty. Uh, and so as a uh, as a young marketing and communication professional, I would almost share that you first have to understand your own why in order to be able to articulate that of others. Um, and so that would be my my piece of advice.